Okay, I saw the video for an experiment for trying to come up with a better way of opening up the end of shotgun shells, uh, kind of specifically unique to the creation of uh, wax slugs, but uh, there's probably other reasons you might want to open one up if you had a shell that didn't go off and you wanted to try and save the shot and or the powder uh, without just throwing the shell away. That's probably another reason, but uh, I know that, that this particular video was uh, in relation to the creation of wax lugs, but I uh, thought I'd give it a try. And what I've come up with here uh, are two specific cutters, one for 20 gauge and one for 12. I know the majority of people out there use uh, 12 gauge slugs, but uh, I actually do 20 as well. Um, I created these <clears throat> out of uh, half inch pine boards, uh, put a hole in the middle of it, uh, specifically uh, cut for the size of the shell. Uh, in this case, it's the 20 gauge, and they fit good and snug in here. And the reason you want to make sure they're snug is you don't want this thing moving around when you're trying to cut it. You won't get a nice uh, cut on the end of it. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, the, sh the, the trimmer is actually pr producing a, a very uniform uh, cut at the end of your shot shell. Uh, and one of the main reasons that I, I want that is uh, I roll crimp mine. Uh, I know a lot of people don't. They, uh, They'll fill them up at the end and just uh, leave the wax and the shot exposed. And I'm not a real big fan of this. Uh, number number one, uh, if you, <laughs> this, I probably did overkill on this one, basically just to ag exaggerate a point, but the, uh, the shot that's exposed here at the end, if you load these in your tube uh, and you're uh, working the action on your shotgun, there's, there's a potential, I'm not saying it will, uh, I don't know that uh, I've seen a whole lot of videos out there for people, you know, screaming about wax lugs and how dangerous they are, but uh, you got the potential for what is called primer strike here. Um, another thing about leaving the, uh, the end exposed, uh, even if you didn't do it quite as exaggerated as I have done here for the, for the purpose of this shell, and you, you, you know, you left it nice and smooth on here with nothing but wax exposed, um, if you've got these loaded in your gun, it's hot outside, uh, you've been shooting for a while, your barrel gets hot, uh, there is a potential that uh, the wax will, will start to melt in here. And if you've got one um, actually loaded in your chamber and you, you, know, you shot a couple and you might you know, be taking a break, want to check the target, uh, just for whatever reason, talking to your friends or something, and your shotgun, you, you, you point it down, uh, and, and, and like I said, you've got this load in the chamber and this is melting in here or starting to melt, uh, it can slide out. This, this can come out fairly easily if the gun is hot, if it's hot outside, if these have gotten a little bit too warm and it could slide out into your barrel and create an obstruction. And then you go and you forget about it and you go pull the trigger and bad day for you, very bad day for you. Uh, so these, these I'm not as so much as a, a fan of, of loading them like this. Like I said, when, I, when I'm done with them, I, I want a nice end on it because I'll load them to about a, a quarter of an inch from the top and I'll put an overshot card on it and then I'll roll crimp it down. Uh, that way it's not coming out of there. Uh, a little bit safer with this method, but I'm getting off track here. Uh, the tool. Like I said, I've got, uh, I've got both of them uh, made up here for 20 gauge and 12. I'll give a demonstration of them. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, like I said, you load the... Uh, the shell specific to the, uh, the gauge that you're doing, because this is a 20 gauge hole in the middle. I have a, uh, a cutting tool that I uh, produced at the top. And what I did was I embedded a, a nut inside here, uh, six millimeter with a screw, uh, a metal screw that I can use. Uh, I didn't want to use a wood screw because if you're doing these over and over again, you, you know, have them for quite a while and you change the blades out on these fairly frequently. Uh, with a wood screw, going in and out of the wood, it's going to it's gonna get bigger over time, it won't seat as well. Uh, so I wanted something a little more permanent. So I, I embedded a, a, a nut in here so that I could screw the metal screw in and it works perfectly. Uh, I created a little uh, tunnel for it to follow as, as this is going down in and I set springs down inside it uh, to give it some tension so that as you're pushing down on this, uh, rather than it just sticking down in there, it will come back up. Uh, and allow you to pull this out after each use. Uh, at the bottom, I created a hole to dispense the shot as, um, as you uh, extract the, the shot shell. So without further ado, demonstration time. Push your, uh, your shell in, push down slightly on the plunger, 
and you'll feel it make contact with the shell. Give it a couple of rotations. You'll actually feel the blade engage and you'll feel when it actually has made uh, a full cut and then you'll actually hear this uh, slight little pop. Uh, just release, pull the shell out. And like I said, you got a beautifully trimmed end here that is ready for filling if you want or uh, filling and then roll crimping. Uh, lift your blade out, make sure that your shot is all dumped out, and that's it. Same thing, same principle with the 12 gauge. I'll go ahead and demonstrate one of these as well. Uh, it's got the, uh, the same cutting tool, same exact design. Let's just push this in. Make sure that it's in all the way. Push down until you feel make contact. Make a couple of rotations. Pull it out. This one's actually kind of a little bit uh, more of a uh, tightness to it than the other one. I haven't used it as much yet, but same principle. So these um, these work very well, and I'm going to start actually making these uh, and trying to sell them. Uh, I haven't really given any thought process yet to what I'm going to sell them for, uh, but once I do, I'll, I'll definitely post the link out there if anybody's interested. Um, I did uh, dip these in, these particular ones in hydrographics film just to kind of get a better 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 look to them. They look kind of cool actually with the uh, hydrographics film on it. Uh, but you can I can paint them, I can laminate them, clear coat them, mul multiple different uh, options. Uh, I also make these uh, shot shell holders. Um, main reason that I do these, not necessarily for the wax slugs, <clears throat> but uh, when I'm reloading anything, if I'm, if I'm reloading uh, buckshot for 12 or 20 gauge, uh, it's nice to have these uh, specifically so that I can keep the shells separated from each other. And if I'm loading the buckshot and maybe putting a buffer in and I want to do more than one or two at a time, which I definitely do, I usually do at least 25, 50 at a time. Um, having this is, is, is a lot better because I can't tell you how many times I've actually, you know, hand loaded uh, a shell with buckshot, put the buffer in, set it next to it, go grab another shell, load my buckshot in, set the buffer, put the buffer in, and go to set it again, and I knock over one of the shell, buffer, buckshot, everything goes flying all over the place. So out of necessity, this isn't necessities of other of all inventions, uh, well, here you go. Uh, I needed this. I, I figured I'd make something simple. Uh, it turned out pretty well. It works very, very well. Uh, but another thing, uh, the grid boards. Uh, I know there's uh, at least one other guy out there that makes these. Uh, and I actually tried to contact him because I thought the, the, the concept was just awesome. And I wanted to, uh, wanted to buy one, but I think he stopped making them. Uh, I can't for the life of me remember his, uh, his screen name. But um, I, I make these in 12 and 20 gauge. Um, do them out of, out of wood. I'm doing them out of pine here. I'm actually going to do them out of walnut, uh, probably cherry, uh, a couple of different experiments I'll make with these. Uh, but this one is, uh, it turned out very nice. What I did was I coated it with polyurethane. Um, when you're actually doing the wax slugs and, and you load these in, you know, you get all, all 25 of them loaded in. Actually, this is the wrong one. That's the 12, this is the 20 gauge. You get all 25 of them loaded in here and it sits up really pretty. And you can just go and uh, use your spoon or however, you, however you're doing it and load them up. And you don't have to worry the, the wax, you know, it, it'll pull up here if you're, if you're going all the way to the top. I, like I said, I don't. I go to about a quarter of an inch from the top and I stop um, and put an overshot card on them and, and, and roll crimp. I'm going to do a video on roll crimping wax slugs here a bit, but um, just for the purpose of, of kind of demoing these, the uh, the, the polyurethane works great because it just cleans right off. You just take a, a, a putty knife or something and just scrape all the excess wax. It comes right off. You just put it right back in your container. I'll use a, a crock pot for mine and you're ready to go for the next load. But uh, I'll post a link uh, to all this. If, if anybody's interested, hit me up. Um, like I said, I'm going to be going in, in, into production with these and actually trying to sell them. So if, if you're interested, uh, just contact me and, and I'll let you know. Okay, thanks for watching.